Hello, everybody. This is Bob Mackey for OneUp.com. And who am I here with today? It's none other than Jeremy Parrish, friend to Man and Beast. That's right. And we're looking at Fire Emblem Awakening uh, coming out for the 3DS this week. This, this week, really? This Tuesday or Wednesday? My goodness. To be uh, specific. Is it Tuesday? Something like that. Okay. I don't know what days are. So, yeah, Jeremy, this is the 11th game, uh, 11th main game, I should say, in the Fire Emblem. I thought it was the 14th. Okay. Uh, anyway. 11th main game. Some of those are remakes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then there's like Fire Emblem Gaiden yeah. and the Shadow of Dragon. And one of those didn't come out here, but so enough forth. about that. So, what can you tell us is different about this game compared to other Fire Emblems? Or maybe Boy, golly, I don't really know because I'm uh, sort of new to the whole Fire Emblem thing. And uh, this is honestly the first real Fire Emblem experience I've had. But so what's kept you away? Um, the fact that Nintendo didn't publish the games back in the day, so I don't have any nostalgia for them. Unlike, oh, I see. Unlike, say, Mario or Kirby or something. But what about Smash Brothers? Yeah, Smash Brothers. <laughs> um, I know. So, no, there hasn't really been any reason that I haven't played Fire Emblem, aside from the fact that uh, I just haven't hasn't fit into my schedule. But here we go with a portable game. These are very demanding games is the problem. Um, anyway, let me, let me tell you about the, the, the new addition for this game. I, I do know that uh, there is a new feature specifically for Fire Emblem Awakening. Because it's on 3DS, it has a heavy, uh, heavy dose of street passing and spot passing. And you see that here in the world map. Uh, there's Great. downloadable content here in the um, whatever this is called, the Outrealm Gate. This is where you can download content. Uh, it'll be released on a weekly basis. I don't know what the pricing scheme is going to be in the US, but in Japan it was 90, between 99 cents and like $4 per download. Mm. I think the total cost ended up being like 70 bucks in addition to the cost of the game. It's pretty Ouch. hefty, but there's a lot of like significant content. It's not just, hey, you downloaded a new skin for Marth or whatever. It's, you know, it's more, more meaty than that. Okay. Um, also, in addition, Little side chapters like this one, the paralogs open up. Um, those are kind of branches off the main story. And then you have these little dudes you can encounter as random battles on the world map. Now some of these, like the guys that are here, because for whatever reason this game hasn't street passed properly, um, these guys are just NPCs from the game. But you can also meet uh, other character or other players, their avatars and their parties on the world map. You can choose to pay to recruit them. Uh, and get their their own avatar, who's basically the equivalent of your main character. Or you can fight them, and if you defeat them, then you can recruit them for free. And so, can you grind in this game? Because in previous games you couldn't, and that was part of the challenge. Like there is a bit of grinding okay. potential here, because you can fight these guys. And let's let's jump into this battle and fight these undead dudes. Speaking of battles, is this the first game? I think it is that they actually let you turn off permadeath. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Maybe a previous uh, one you can did, You can turn off permadeath. And, and of course, you know, all the, the little features here, uh, like party conversations. We're borrowing Michael Zipkin's game, and his protagonist is Miria because he's a Robotech nerd. <laughs> and uh, she and Krom, who's technically the protagonist of the game, even though you don't play as him, uh, looks like they can become best buds and do these little uh, anime style. Oh my goodness, it's a girl. I'm so fumble putting it around her. Romance. It's seriously like, oh yeah, here's the bath scene. Oh boy. Yep. Mandatory. Oh, I bet she's going to scream Kia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is less salacious than they oh. were letting on. Oh. No, no Kia, but she's blushing. My goodness. Oh, there, there we go. Yeah. Seriously, did anime, you, see, did you play quota. this yet or what? Uh, I haven't done this scene okay. exactly. But, but I mean, you can't predict it anyways. This this game is super anime. I mean, even though it has a more, like, I don't know, less cartoony style, the character, uh, character dialogue is all, like, super... You know, you have your Sundere character oh, and your right. Dere Dere character it, and all it, that crap. It can't be as bad as Valkyrie Chronicles. Sorry, Valkyrie Chronicles 2. That, that sort of had uh, the same approach. Like, let's take every well, stereotype. Well, they're not, they're not fighting in high school. So, yeah. anyway, let's just cruise on through this. Yeah, blah, blah. I saw the word naked in there. That's important. T for teen. Now they're going to have sex. Ooh, support That's level That's what A. a means. So a what does that sex. do it's, in it's battle? It's third base. Well, start with first base, second base, third base, and then you get up to uh, S, which is sex. Wow. Uh, I just made that up, but I don't think it's totally wrong because in this game you do have a general generational system. Yeah. And your protagonist can marry another character if your support level gets high enough. 
And then the kids that you have, you can recruit as paralog characters later down the road. That seems like this game would have to take place over several decades, unless you have baby units that sort of crawl out on the front I don't lines. know. I don't know how they're going to do it. Like, you know, different games handle it different ways. So you have stuff like uh, Fantasy Star 3, which actually do take place over the course of generations. Right. Um, but then you have stuff like Dragon Quest V, where your character doesn't actually age, even though you have kids because of uh, plot contrivances. So these guys all look kind of nasty compared to Michael's party, so I'm probably not going to win this battle. Uh, as always, you're outnumbered, outmatched. You've got mages, you've got... I don't even know what these dudes are. Bagheads. Blighted claws. Yeah, it's like an evil scarecrow. So like in other Fire Emblem games, this one has a paper, scissors, rock sort it does. of system, both for magic and S -A -L, for attacks. S-A-L, swords, axe, lance. So do you find that they... I'm probably not going to do very well, but... Uh, let's wait. Yay, I got a fancy thing. I don't know what that is. I'm going to team up. I'm going to move the axe-wielding dude over to support the lance-wielding, or no, the sword-wielding. So do they act as guy. one unit when you do that? Or are they just... Uh, yes, uh, you okay. only get one turn for those characters, but they support each other and become much stronger as a result. Um, they have higher evasion, higher attack. Um, they're they're likely to defend one another and completely negate enemy damage. Mm. So there's a lot of value in in doing these uh, collaborative things. And if you you know pair up male and female characters, they'll uh, they'll get romantic eventually. Personally, my my hero, I'm uh, trying to get him to. Uh, team up with a lady named Sully who has a potty mouth. She's really awesome. She's like, yeah, she's basically curses like a sailor. You're trying to tame her wild heart. Basically. So that wasn't a very good decision right there. This guy is a tank, but he's very vulnerable to magic. So I think he's going to die. I'll be nice and I, oh yeah, yeah, he's permanently dead. That's it. So at this point, most people just reset the game and say, well, I suck. And uh, that's why I've put in like 10 hours on my copy of the game and I'm still at like chapter 5 or 6. Because you just want to make sure I everyone keep resetting. Right. I actually have restarted my game uh, without permadeath but on hard mode. And it turns out that's even more difficult than with permadeath on normal mode. Jeez. This game is not one that's meant for. Uh, it's not meant to be beaten easily. I mean, look at these guys. There is no way. There's no way my party's going to. Overcome. We will. We shall not overcome. It is good to see a Nintendo published title be this, I guess, hardcore for lack well, of a better term. Well, that's always that's always been Fire Emblem's thing. Right, but the the fact that they're willing to support it in America still, even though I don't I don't know how, how well the other games have performed in the past, but it seems to have a pretty faithful audience. Right. So you can you can get a, an ex an idea of how you're going to perform in battle with this screen right here, um, and it looks like Crom will totally destroy this Risen. But the Risen might counterattack him. You see, he, the Risen has 30 hit points. He's the enemy. Mm -hmm. And Krom will reduce him to zero. But in the process, he'll counterattack and probably reduce Krom to 12 hit points from 23, which means that one more attack and Krom's out of business. So that'd be bad. But let's see what happens. What the heck? It's not my game. <laughs> so what if I spoil it forever for Michael? OK, yeah, so you get one attack. And there's a counterattack that hits hard, and then because Krom's speed is so much higher than the mages, he gets a second attack after the the counter. Now, nice. if the bow the bow wielder there were were at the dam, he would have protected Krom from that counterattack, but he sucks, so he didn't. Uh, but of course, you can have your healer top off his health, but she's probably going to die now. Because, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> well, even if I block the enemy's route. This dude has a bow, which means he can shoot two panels, and uh, there's also a bunch of mages. They have a two-panel range, and they have really powerful magic for their levels. Uh, so I don't think this is going to go well. But what the hell? Let's let's give it a try. Um, so this dude is in a fort, which means he's going to have extra defense. I probably can't do much to stop him. So we'll go over for this guy. And, oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> I'll knock him down to one hit point, which means he'll still be active in the field, which means on the next turn, he'll go right for Long Ku and uh, knock him down from his six hit points to one. Or actually, probably kill him. So this is a really bad tactical decision. 
If you're playing at home, so I recommend you do not do this. It's such a bad idea. So the anti-strategy guide. It is. But I mean, you know, this is an actual challenging strategy game. It is not... Let's be honest, it's not Final Fantasy Tactics, where you could kind of just, you know, build up your team and cheese the game and win. This is not a game you can easily manipulate and uh, just blow through on a whim by, by uh, you know, by exploiting certain things. Yeah. You really have to think about how each battle goes. It's more like XCOM in that sense. It is. It's very, I mean, I, I feel like there's a huge spiritual similarity between oh, yeah. XCOM and Fire Emblem. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, the series hasn't really gotten much traction in the U.S., but I'm hoping that everyone who has played XCOM recently and said, that game is so good, wow, that's creepy, uh, will consider Fire Emblem, even though it's a portable game. On right, and it's full system. of anime. Uh, it's so full of anime, yeah. Anyway, now you can watch probably my entire party die <laughs> in a single turn of enemy attacks. They should have, like, a parental guidance warning on it, this, uh, this video. Yeah, I mean, really, death. this this team that I took on was way over the uh, the levels of of Michael's party, so um, I'm going to be nice and not save the file afterwards. But this is this is going to be a game over. It's just, it's just a total bloodbath. It is. It's terrible. But I mean, you know, that's that's what you're up against when you play Fire Emblem. You're up against probably dying pathetically. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. He shrugged it off. Kind of, but not this one. Yeah, I've never faced a party of mages quite like this, but my god, it's just. I it's wouldn't brutal. recommend it. This kind of does um, bring to mind, I don't know, playing this game, especially with permadeath on, uh, makes me aware and a little frustrated of a big problem with this genre, which is that there's this kind of disconnect between how you have to behave and how the enemy behaves because the enemy can just treat his characters like fodder. It doesn't That's matter. That's true, yeah. Like, there will always be a next battle for you. But you have to be really cautious and can't lose anyone. But, you know, the enemy behaves recklessly. It uses combat tactics. You never would. It doesn't care if it sends a dude out to take out your healer and that guy is then immediately killed by everyone surrounding him. So, I don't know. It's, it's a little bit frustrating because it... When you face the computer, you don't play the way that you would if you were fighting another human, you know. Right. You're forced to have empathy, and your your decisions matter over more than one battle. Well, I mean, there's this continuity between your, your party. Right. Like, you have to maintain your party's integrity through the entire battle, through the entire game. And the computer doesn't have to worry about that. So it has this huge advantage in addition to numbers. And all you have is your brain, which admittedly is not that good in my <laughs> case. So I still actually have two characters alive, but there's no way this battle is going to turn out no. well for us. Um, it's not even that there are reinforcements around the uh, the edges of the screen, but there's no way these these characters can take out the bad guys. So, is there a self-destruct option like in Lemmings? Yeah, man, that'd be amazing if I just <laughs> sent Crom in here to kill everyone. So who should I kill? Uh, floppy hat guy. Yep, that one guy, that, that, that one guy, that guy is going to die. Take that, Molaram. <sighs> anyway, so that's kind of a general overview of Fire Emblem and a good example of how not to play the game. Uh, <laughs> do you have any other questions? Not uh, that I'm an expert or anything. but I mean, it just seems like this is uh, one of the bigger RPGs of this year for the 3DS. So far, yeah. And, uh, uh, I mean, actually, no, actually, it's the biggest so far, but there's right. Etrian Odyssey 4, Ooh. there'll be Soul Hackers, and I think I'm we sure Shin Megami Tensei 4 will be coming, Yeah. Uh, and, you know, there are some others. I always hate when I waste a critical hit against a dude who has, like, no health left. This is pre-review. Are you, are you willing to recommend this? Oh, yeah, I mean, if you are up for a challenge and you want a very difficult strategy RPG that's very well made... Uh, and requires a lot of thought, I absolutely recommend Fire Emblem. You should probably tether your DS to your hand so you don't throw it. I think everyone down. will enjoy this game more than I have because the uh, you won't be playing this game to review it and you won't you know be rushing through it or you know, feel compelled to finish it. You can just kind of take your time and if that means you have to spend a week working through a single battle, so be it. That's kind of how these video games were meant to be. Uh, but yeah, I think it's really well made and uh, kind of makes me want to go back and check out some of the previous Fire Emblems.
<laughs> there I'll are time for it. several, at least a dozen. Yes. All right. Well, thanks a lot for uh, showing us off, uh, Fire Emblem, Jeremy. Yeah. And thanks uh, for enjoying my pitiful performance. Hopefully, we'll have a review on the, for this soon.